In this lesson, we'll learn how to roll the truck. Now we already have our roll cage with its animation on there, and it's handling all of the rolling for us. But now what we need to do is bring in our truck parts and attach them to our roll cage. Okay, now when we do this, we're also going to add our end cloth metal material to those parts so that we can actually sim them and have them collide with our ground uh, surface. So let's get started. I'm going to do file import and I have my truck parts in a separate folder here and we're going to first bring in the body. Okay, it shows up right there and you can already see too I've imported the truck tires which I'm not going to be dealing with. We're not going to sim those. They're just parented to our locator that we can see right here and they're this group right here. So we have all of our tires just as normal geometry and just a parent-child relationship to the locator. So here's my truck body and we'll want to just rename that here. Okay, now it comes in centered as it was modeled and I want to transfer or just copy all of the translate and rotate parameters from my roll cage just so that my truck body will match up with the roll cage perfectly. So to do this I'll just select the roll bar then select my truck body and I will highlight in the channel box my translate and rotate values and we'll go to edit transfer attribute values Okay, and we'll just make sure that from channel box is checked. Now I'm going to use this a lot for all of the pieces and parts that I bring in. So I've already added this up here to my shelf. So we'll just go ahead and hit apply and close. Okay, and that just copies everything over there uh, for me uh, nicely. So now with that selected, let's go and add our N mesh N cloth object. Okay, so we'll just do create end cloth and I'm going to open up the attribute editor and attach our car metal attributes that we did in our previous lesson. Okay, and now a couple of things I want to check here. The input mesh attract, that is going to allow it to match my original input mesh, which is right now the same thing that we're looking at. It's basically the truck in its standard position here. But one thing that we want to do in order to get this to work is that we're going to have to take the truck body and make it a child of the locator. Now we are doing a simulation so normally those types of things are completely ignored. However, we are also using the input motion drag this is going to force the end cloth object to inherit the motion of its input mesh. So we'll just look at this in the hypergraph. Just think it's a little bit easier to see here. Okay, so here's my truck body. It is an end cloth object. There is my input mesh, and here is my actual cloth object. So they're just, they're all as one node there. Now here's my locator. This is essentially my roll cage. This already has all my keyframe animation on it. And so I'm just going to take that truck body, okay, and just make it a child of the locator. Okay, now that brings over both meshes. Now that output cloth mesh, it doesn't care that it's a child of anything because this is the guy that's going to be simmed. However, that input motion drag that we've assigned here as well as a little bit there of that input mesh attract is going to force it to look at this guy which does care that it is a child of the locator. Okay, so let's go, uh, we're doing self collision. Okay, and we have a self collide with scale of 5 Okay. I'm going to drop that just to 1 for right now and just hit play. Okay. And we can see it takes off without its truck body. 
So let's just make sure that we have, there we go, my nucleus is actually just turned off. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit play again and get my update. There we go. Okay, now we can clearly see that the simulation is in effect and it is moving our truck body with that roll cage. Okay, so we know it works, so I'm going to stop that there and take that back to its first frame. Okay, and I'm going to bring that self collide width scale back up to five. Okay, I dropped it down because this is very expensive, so just wanted to be able to see it update quickly. We could have also, we could have just killed the self collide and that would make our simulation go a lot faster. Okay, and again, just checking to make sure that we are operational. Okay, so here's my first piece. I'm going to go ahead and bring in some other pieces. Okay, and let's bring in our, uh, let's see, let's bring in the tailgate. Okay, and we'll grab, again, I'm going to grab that roll cage. Shift select my tailgate and just use my shelf button. Okay, and now this time it didn't work so well. The reason for this, let's just hit undo, is just the positioning of this object. Now you can see its center is actually located with the object itself and not in the center of the world. Now I can fix this pretty quickly by just taking that pivot point and snapping it to the center of the world. Okay. Or we could have just grouped it and that would have done the same deal, but we would then had to break that parent-child relationship with the group. So it saves us just a few steps here. Okay, So we'll hit that shelf and now we can see we transferred those attributes over. Alright, so now I'm going to grab this object here and we want to make it into an end cloth object create end cloth and then we'll change the preset to be our car metal. Then I need to select that and again let's look at that inside the hypergraph so we can see a little bit better. Okay we got that there. Middle mouse we're gonna drag it over to our locator. Okay everything else should be set up. Now it will follow with this but I also need it to deform with any type of damage that happens with our truck body. So I'm going to grab the lower edge here where the tailgate should connect and we'll grab just the lower edges here and we'll go to vertices. I'll hold shift, select the truck body and add a point to surface constraint. Okay. We don't need to do anything to this constraint. This is going to work for us just fine with the defaults. Okay. Now from here, pretty much rinse and repeat, I'm going to file, import, okay. and I have a couple of other pieces, but we're going to skip those. And let's just bring in the front bumper. This is really going to be the only other object here that I'm going to change in my setup and it's centered in the world so I'm good to go there to copy attributes. Grab that, transfer it, there we go. Select it, make it an end cloth object. Reselect it and we'll then make it a child of our locator. Okay. Now, the thing that I want to change here is I'm going to take the self collide with scale. I'm going to drop it down to one. Oop, we didn't take our, didn't do our preset. Let's do that here. Replace. Thought that should be five. And let's just take that to one. And then under my input mesh attract, I'm going to raise this up. And the reason for doing it here on the bumper is because the bumper should stay fairly solid um, when it does receive some damage. But as it continues to go, it will still receive even more damage. So by the time this is done, 
the bumper could be completely destroyed, but in the beginning part, the first hit isn't going to make it uh, completely crumble. So it'll follow that input mesh attract for a little bit. Okay, and then I want to do the same thing here. I want to select edges and we'll convert this selection and I'm just selecting all of the edges that are common okay, to my truck surface there. Okay, and hold shift and we'll do point to surface. Okay, so now I have the hood that we'll add and we'll also add the bed uh, cover that goes in the back there and we would select our vertices, add it as a point to surface constraint. Once all of that is done, okay, we'll watch the simulation, maybe make some minor adjustments here and there, uh, but then we want to cache that simulation out. And for this, what I've done, I've already cached it, but I'll select each and every piece that I want to cache and go to end cache, create new cache, and choose one file per object. Okay, and that will give me uh, all of those pieces as one. Okay, uh, we could also, which is actually, uh, eh, it all depends. I, I would actually prefer one file per object. That way I can break those out and change them if need be. Okay, so we'll cache this out and we'll take a look at it in our next lesson. And this is a look at our roll cage simulation.